Builders in the U.S. had a busy February. Work on new developments like this one picked up last month, and so have property prices. After the worst downturn in decades, America's housing market is finally turning around. And Melissa Cohen knows a thing or two about it. She's a New York-based mortgage broker who helps would-be home buyers take advantage of ultra-low interest rates. The purchase market, I would say, three years ago was much weaker than it is today. But the good news today is that, for example, here in a metropolitan area, there's so much demand for housing that before a listing even gets out, the property is generally sold, which is a great sign for the real estate market, and hopefully it will overflow into other you know, markets throughout the country. And the U.S. property market got a little push from here. America's Federal Reserve has been buying up $85 billion a month worth of U.S. government bonds and mortgage-related debt because it wants to spur growth and push down unemployment. The trading desks inside the New York Federal Reserve are where orders to buy bonds are carried out. Even though there is some sign of a recovery in the housing market, stronger retail sales and even jobs growth, don't expect America's central bank to ease up on its drive to stimulate the economy. At least not yet. The U.S. economy is making slow progress, but budget cuts coming out of Washington may blunt that. There is a significant drag from fiscal policy in, in the U.S. this year, just as there is in Europe and throughout most of the developed economy world. Uh, and in that type of, of outlook, headline GDP growth late, rates are likely to remain muted, and there'll be at least some uncertainty injected about uh, the state of labor markets. Anger on the streets of Cyprus. For many Americans, that country's financial troubles seem far away. For the U.S. Central Bank, it's a reminder of the global risks still lurking. Michelle Fleury, BBC News, New York.